like more people. Hey, boy. Wait a minute, Tommy Hill. Here we go. Here we go. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you now with an open body, mind, heart, soul, and spirit. We're not asking anything for ourselves. We're asking you to come and help us. Help us to carry out your will. 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 Help us to carry Father, I bow down my knee to you, my heart. I open up my mind, my spirit. Father, I ask that you pour down your blessings of love, peace, and serenity, strength, power, forgiveness. Inject it into my vein like, I, like the air I breathe, th things that I cannot have, things I cannot live without. Father, I ask that you guide us today. You strengthen our every step in the face of adversity in this fallen world. Father, I thank you so much for what you did for us. You made a way out of no way, Father. It seems like you just carved an exit from a sure, deadly ending. And you allowed us to, to see this way out. Father, I ask that you just blanket the world today with your peace and your love. And I ask that you forgive us our sins. You bring us into the Holy of Holies. And I thank you, Father, for everything you've ever done, everything you do, and everything you promise to do. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. In Jesus' name. Jesus.
Hallelujah. God is good. Thank you, brother. Thank you, sir. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this awesome time in your presence. We just thank you just for a word today, Lord, and just uh, speaking to our hearts, speaking into our lives, and speaking into each individual situation. We thank you for what you've already done. We thank you for what you're doing and what you're going to do. And we thank you for allowing us to be a part of it. We're so excited about this season and everything that's in front of us. We're excited to be born for such a time as this. Lord, I just pray today that you would just stir up the gifts, activate the gifts that have been placed on the inside of each and every one of us, Father. Let that fire burn brighter. Wherever we're at, Lord, it can always burn brighter. Let that fire burn brighter. Let your Holy Spirit come in and just burn in our hearts and just push us into more, Lord. There's always more. And we just thank you for just choosing us. And we're so honored to be a part. I thank you for just being able to hear your voice today with accuracy and clarity and speaking it with boldness. Lord, we love you. We yield ourselves to you, Holy Spirit, and we just say thank you. Thank you for the cross, Jesus. Have your way today, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Love you guys. So just a quick review. The last time that we met, we kind of we addressed the question that Josh, Josh had presented to the group. And the question basically was, why do some people thrive in the things of the kingdom and then why are some people destroyed? And bottom line was, you know, just people not honoring God's word, you know, is one of the reasons why people aren't successful in the things of God. And when I say honoring God and honoring his word, I just mean by putting it first place, right? And we see this even in the teaching of Jesus. We see this when Jesus shows the two, the two houses that are built right? One house stood and one house fell in the storm. And the house that was able to stand in the storm was the house where the builder of the house was what? He was a doer of the word, right? So we went into Hosea 4, 6, which talks about, it's written to the Levitical priesthood, but God was speaking to the priesthood and he was saying that my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge, right? And he says, because you have rejected knowledge or you have rejected my, my word, right? So we brought that over because we know we're not, none of us are Levitical priests. We're not under the Old Covenant. We're in the New Covenant. So we brought this over into the New Covenant, and we showed where the Apostle Paul and Peter begins to talk about this New Testament priesthood, right? And in Peter, the Bible refers to us as a royal priesthood, a holy generation, and it says we're being built up as houses of what? God's glory, right? So we went over to 1 Corinthians 6, verse 19, and we saw where the Bible says that we are the temple of God. So we went into the Old Testament, and we began to look at the Old Testament temple, right? In the Old Testament temple, you had the outer court, the inner court, and the holy of holies, right? So being men of God and children of God, we are created in the image of God, right? In the image of God is first it's love, and then God is a triune being, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We too are created in love, amen? And we too are triune beings. We are a spirit, we possess a soul, and we live in a body, 
Now, the Old Testament is the New Testament concealed, right? So you see this hidden in the Old Testament. But in the New Testament, it's revealed to us, right? So as a New Testament priest, we saw last week, we have a responsibility. Number one, and I like the way Josh says this, I love this, our yes to Jesus is our no to everything else, right? So our first responsibility dealing with our body is to be led by the Spirit, is to walk in the Spirit, Right? And the Bible says if we walk in the Spirit, that we won't what? Fulfill the lust of the flesh. Right? Because if we walk in the flesh, the Bible says the wages of sin is what? Death. Right? But the gift of God is eternal life. So when we choose to walk in the Spirit, we keep that body under subjection. Like Paul said, we looked at uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 27. Paul says, I have to discipline my body lest I become a counterfeit. What does he mean by that? Well, I can raise my hands in church and and sing hallelujah, and then I can go out in the world and act like the world, and that disqualifies me, right? But if I continue to walk in the Spirit and continue to walk in the Word and continue to walk in obedience in front of God's people and in front of the world, then people are going to want what I have, right? People are going to desire that, all right? So walking in the Spirit, right? We also have a responsibility dealing with our soul, which is our mind, our will, and our emotions. In Romans 12, Paul says, 1 and 2, first he says we have to present our bodies a living sacrifice, which is our reasonable service. Why does he say that? Because Jesus, the Bible says our body is not our own. Jesus paid the ultimate price. He laid down his life so that we could have life. So Paul's saying Jesus laid down his life. He went to the cross. God became a man, came to this earth. That's the gospel and went to the cross, one of the most gruesome deaths. So now it's my reasonable service. If Jesus went to the cross, it's my reasonable service today, every day to present my body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. And, of course, we know it's because of the cross that we're able to do that. But the reflection of that is I'm going to walk this out in the earth, and I'm going to walk in the Spirit. Two, he says, be not conformed to this world, Right? but be transformed by the renewing of our mind that we might prove what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. So the word conform means to be shaped or molded to, right? So we can't allow everything that's going on in this world right now to shape us, right? We have to keep our focus. The Bible says it like this, keep your mind on what? Things above. Right? It's saying keep your mind on heavenly things. Keep your mind on the Word. Right? Our faith is in the Word of God. Right? And if we keep our eyes on the Word of God, then everything that's going on in, on, in this world, in and around us, right, it's not going to have that effect on us, right, that it does on some people. It's not going to be able to pull us here and pull us there. And What's this per- person saying? What is this person doing? We're not going to be worried about that. We're only going to be worried about what God's saying, right? And faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God, right? So we're being led daily by the Word of God. So we have to present our bodies, transform our mind through the Word, and then in the Spirit, we're called to, and one of the things we looked at that builds us up spiritually is praying in the Spirit. Paul says, when I pray in the Spirit, he says, I edify myself. Right, this is a charging like a battery. It's also a building up. And we see that in Jude, verses 20 and 21, where Jude says, but you, beloved, right? Building up your most holy faith. How? Praying Praying in the Holy Spirit, keeping yourself what? In the love of God. So that means to build up like a superstructure, to build a house. Right, so we see all these things lining up from the old Coming into the new, it's a common thread. It's running together, and we see this thing manifesting today in the church, in and through us. So we looked at that. We've been looking at that um, through Jesus' words in John 7, 37 through 39, where he says, In that day, those who believe in me, out of their belly will flow rivers of living water. Right? So salvation, we received the Holy Spirit. Then we saw a subsequent act where we went. He told the disciples to go. And Terry, the Holy Spirit came down, and then they begin to go out, right? And people begin to get saved, people begin to get healed, lives begin to change. You could call it revival. Revival broke out, 
God desires revival. Right? The Word of God is what? The will of God. And the will of God begins where the Word of God is known. So if I see Jesus giving these instructions to the early church, guess what? Those instructions still apply to me today. He's still calling me to go out, right, and do. And we see that in John 14, and do what he did, where he says, those who believe in me, he says, they won't, they won't only do the things that I did, but they'll do greater works, right? And we see the Bible says in Acts 10, 38, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power, <clears throat> and he went about doing good, healing all who were oppressed of the devil, Right? This is the pattern. This is the pattern. Here's the cool thing. One of the things that I believe, one of the areas that God's called me into is to reveal the nature of the Father. Right? Sonship. Sonship. Identity. Yes. So, Jesus, Jesus made a powerful statement in that same chapter, John 14. They were asking about the Father, who the Father was, and Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen, the you've seen the Father, right? So if you want to see a picture of the Father, go back and look at the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, right? And everywhere Jesus went, there was deliverance. Everywhere he went, there was healing, right? He was releasing life everywhere he went. And the only people who weren't healed were the ones who didn't come to him because they were familiar with him, Right? And that's what's so cool about the body of Christ. Some of us can go in where others aren't welcome and people will listen and respond to us where they wouldn't to someone else, right? And I've seen that happen before, even in my own life with my grandfather. Um, he, was, he was very hard-headed and he, he was 80-something years old when he received Jesus, but he made it in, amen? That's the long-suffering God and the love of God. So in 1 John chapter 3, verse 8, we see the purpose of the Son of God. And it says, was this, for this purpose was the Son of God manifested was to destroy the works of the devil. Right? Let's go to 1 John 2, 6, just so we can put our eyes on this verse. 1 John chapter 2, verse 6. So just for the sake of the, the uh, I see at least, one new person here and whoever's watching today. This is Kingdom Life. This is a discipleship school. Uh, this is our third class. Uh, our first class was on identity. We taught on identity extensively. And then we taught on authority. That was our second class. And now we're going in and we're teaching about the Holy Spirit. Right? And the Holy Spirit is the empowerment that we need to go forth and get everything done that God's calling us to do. Right? It's the life of God. It's the power of the Holy Spirit. It's the same power that rose Jesus Christ from the dead, that brought Jesus back from the dead, the same power that hovered over the deep in the beginning when God created everything, that same power is dwelling on the inside of us. That's right. Right? And the Bible says when we get baptized in the Spirit, He clothes us, and then He begins to come out of us. Right? So we're really getting a revelation of what this looks like so we can begin to walk in it. Because without a vision, people perish. Right? Without a vision, we live like this where God said my people are being destroyed for lack of knowledge. And, and really, people in the church are being destroyed because they're not walking in the Spirit. They're not renewing their mind in the Word. And they're not, they have no prayer life. So the enemy's able to come in, right? And they're very susceptible to the attacks of the enemy because spiritually, they're not built up, right? Spiritually, they're not built up. But as we do this, we learned last week, not only will God's life begin to flow out of us because we're edified, but when we keep our flesh under subjection and we keep our soul, our mind, will, and emotions, when we keep it still, then we can hear God's voice. Right, And one of the attributes of the glory of God is being able to hear His voice. Right, One of the most powerful manifestations of the glory of God today is the voice of God coming out of the believer. Right, Because God's in heaven. 
Who is he speaking through today? He's speaking through his church. Yeah, his body. He's speaking through his apostles, his pastors, his prophets, his teachers, his evangelists. For what purpose? For the edifying of the body of Christ. To perfection of the saints. Perfection of the saints till we all come into what? Maturity. To, maturity. to the unity, right? Unity is so important. To unity. And to, he says, to the level of the stature of the fullness of Christ. In other words, we'll walk just like Jesus. And what is the purpose of this? Is this purpose so I can get in pride and build myself up and look like Mr. Super Christian? No. The whole purpose of this is given to us in 1 Peter. The Bible says that God desires that none perish, that all come to repentance. So the goodness of God, the Bible says in Romans chapter 2, that it's the goodness of God that leads people to repentance. So when Jesus was anointed by God, by the Holy Spirit and power, and he went about doing good, right? That was drawing people in, right? And the reason why we go out and the reason why we preach the gospel and the reason why we walk out the gospel and God uses us to lay hands on the sick and he works miracles and does all these other things is so that he can bring people in. People will see his goodness and he, we can bring them into the kingdom, right? The goodness of God calls people into repentance. And Jesus said, those who believe in me, and we're about to look at, look at this. The Word of God says in 1 John chapter 2, those who abide in him will what? Walk just as he walked. And it lines perfectly up with what Jesus says. Those who believe in me will not only do what I did, but greater things. Right? And, and one of those things, and Jeff talked about this, is the body is going to be spread out all over the earth, whereas Jesus was in one spot right now, the Bible in, in Habakkuk chapter 2, I think it's verse 4, says that um, before Jesus comes back, it says the entire earth is going to be filled with God's glory as the waters fill the sea, right? And the way that's going to take place is the body of Christ expanding over the whole globe and everywhere we go, anointed by the Holy Spirit and power, that glory is going to be released in and through our lives. Amen. And he's building us up right now. He's building us up. So, 1 John chapter 2, verse 6. Can you read that for me, Josh? He who says he abides in him ought himself also to walk just as he walked. Amen. Come on down to verse 11. Let's just do this today. Let's do a couple new things in here. I want to. But he who hates his brother is in darkness. And walks in darkness, and does not know where he is going, because the darkness has blinded his eyes. Okay, let's. Seven, I'm sorry, I should have said seven through eleven. Let's go to seven and going down. I'm sorry, brethren. I write no new commandment to you, but an old commandment which you have had from the beginning. The old commandment is the word which you heard from the beginning, and again a new commandment I write to you, which thing is true in him and you. Because the darkness is passing away, and the true light is already shining. He who says he is in the light and hates his brother is in darkness until now. And he who loves his brother abides in the light, and there is no cause for stumbling in him. But he who hates his brother is in darkness and walks in darkness, and does not know where he is going, because the darkness has blinded his eyes. Mm. So, we, we have been talking about the power of the Holy Spirit and walking in the things of God. And yes, this is so important. But more important than walking in the power of the Holy Spirit is walking in love, right? And love is the identity of the Holy Spirit, right? If we don't walk in love, if we get out of love, this right here states that we'll be blinded, right? In other words, we'll have no vision. We just said that where there's no vision, the people what? They perish. So if we get outside of love, this, this text right here tells us not only will our eyes be blinded, but we'll begin to what? Stumble. Yeah. Right? And then we open the door for the enemy to come in and do what? Steal, kill, and destroy. And we're seeing that a lot in the earth today. Right? We're seeing a lot. Of, there's a lot of people that are getting out of love. They're, they're getting their eyes off of love. They're getting their eyes off the word of God. And they're opening the door up and the enemy's able to come in. We want to keep we want to keep all the doors and all the access points closed so that the enemy can't come in 
I mean, we want to stay in love. Because it's when we're in love that we can not only hear the voice of God, but the power of the Holy Spirit can flow in us and through us. Amen? So, while we're in 1 John, let's go over, and we're talking about this subject. Let's go over to 1 John chapter 4, verse 8. 1 John 4 and 8. You got that, Pastor? You in the New King James? Can you read that for me? He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. Amen. He who does not love. The identity of the Father is love. Amen. He is love. He is love. In, Genesis, in the identity class, we learn that we, cre- we, we are created in His image, right? In the beginning, in Genesis chapter 1, verses 26 through 28, you'll see that we were created. Mankind was created in the image and likeness of God. And then he what? He said, be blessed, fruitful, multiply, diminish. And then immediately he said what? Have dominion. Go ahead, brother. Um, he, he that loves not, knoweth not God. God is love. I'm reading out of New King James. But um, that's an all-encompassing love. That's, uh, you know, it's, 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 it's easy to love your family. Yeah. It's easy to love the ones who love you back. Amen. But that's an encompassing love. Amen. That's for everybody. Yeah. Good point. So Jeff just made a good point. This is there's different types of love described in the Bible. And we're not going to go through every type of love, but I'll mention a couple. Let's let's deal with phileo love, which is brotherly love, and then agape love. Right? And Jeff is saying it's easy to love your brother who's always good to you or your, you know, one of your family members that's always good to you and, you know, they're, they're, they're your immediate, let's say, biological family. But then you've got someone out here who's maybe said something bad about you. Maybe they've swung on you before. Maybe they've spit in your face, you know. Maybe they've stolen from you before. We're called to love them too. Because, you see, when we were... When God created mankind in his image in the garden, he created him in his image and his likeness. And God's image is love, and it's not phileo love, it's agape love. That's an unconditional love, right? No matter what you've done to me, not saying I've got to condone, if somebody's you know, doing all kind of crazy stuff, I'm not condoning it, and I don't love descendants on their life, but I have to love that person no matter what, Right? And Romans 5.5 5 says that love, agape love, when we receive Jesus Christ as Lord, has been shed abroad in our heart by the Holy Spirit. And we've looked at that so many times over in Ezekiel where he says, I'm taking out this heart of stone and I'm giving you a heart of agape so that you can walk this out. You can walk in love. Right? Because in the beginning we were created in God's image. We were created in agape love. Man fell. Right? And when man fell, he died spiritually. In other words, the heart of the agape heart that he had was exchanged for a phileo heart. Right? He no longer had that agape love. He no longer had the love of God inside of him, the first Adam. But where the first Adam failed, the last Adam, Jesus Christ, came back and successfully walked out everything that God required to get us back into the garden to get us back into a place where we could have that heart given to us, right? By receiving everything that Jesus did through his earthly walk and through his sacrifice on the cross, by believing and receiving that by faith, we have now taken back on that agape love heart and now the Holy Spirit. Until we got that heart, that agape heart back, right? The new nature back, Holy Spirit couldn't come inside of us. Because Holy Spirit can't come into an unholy place. Right? And now the Bible says in 1 Peter that we've been born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible seed by the Word of God. When we receive this Word, this Word is incorruptible. This Word is God Himself. The Bible says in in, uh, John chapter 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was what? The Word was with God, and the Word was God, and then the Word became flesh. And dwelt among us, Jesus. Right? So when we receive this word, 
Every seed produces after its own kind. We have received once again that agape love, and now the Holy Spirit has moved in on the inside of us, and now we are called. That's how we can do 1 John 2, 6. Because without the power of the Holy Spirit and without a, a, a life change, a heart change, we never would have been able to do that. We would have never been able to walk as he walked. How did he walk? He went about doing good, healing all who were oppressed of the devil. What is that? That's love manifested, right? And no revelation of Scripture is ever going to contradict God's nature. Go ahead. I also want to say that my God tells me in his word that all my wrongs have been thrown into the sea of forgetfulness. Mm -hmm. And most people are accustomed to going to him every day and asking for forgiveness for the same sins of their yeah, past. Yeah. And he's like, son, I don't even know what you're talking about. Yeah. You now are, you're, you're robed in righteousness and the blood covers you. Mm. But sometimes we don't think about it, but we have to do the same when we love other people too. Mm -hmm. So that example that he gives us, that it's in the sea of forgetfulness, we have to do the same with everybody we come in contact with. That's good. And when we, and, and in, a, in, a, in a practical way of showing that is, we never hold anything against somebody. We never bring up their past. We never, we never <coughs> say that, you know, because you did this, you're this. We, we just got it. Amen. Amen. That's good. Always seeing through. We always want to see through God's eyes. Right? We always want to see through God's eyes. And God always sees the best. And I think one of the biggest struggles that a lot of people have, especially we've seen this in the jails a lot, is there's regret, there's guilt, there's shame, there's condemnation. Because the enemy, I like to call him the God of our past in that he likes to bring it up. That's what I mean when I say that. He likes to take our past where God has already cast his past. Once we've given it to him, it's in the sea of forgetfulness. As far as the east is from the west, it's, it's gone. But the enemy likes to constantly bring these things up and remind us, right? That's why the Bible is very clear about casting down thoughts and imaginations that exalt themselves above God's word, right? We have to constantly do that. And there's so many thoughts that come every day, so it's a constant thing that we have to do, right? We have to cast down when, when the enemy brings guilt, shame, and condemnation, right? God's bringing forgiveness, love, mercy, grace, peace, joy. He's bringing all these things, but we have to constantly, we have the responsibility. The Bible says that we have to what? We have to present our bodies. We have to renew our mind. You renew your mind. We have to pray in the Spirit. But you, beloved, pray in the Holy Spirit, right? So we have a responsibility, right? But God has given us everything that we need in order to do these things. We just have to exercise our own power to, to, to get up and do these things every day. Amen? So... Go down to 1 John 4, 17. All right, I'm going to start with, um, man, all this is good. All right. Verse 17. Love has been perfected among us in this, that we, ha we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Because as he is, so are we. When we get to heaven, what does it say? What does it say, Pastor? Be made in this world. Right. Be made like. Right now, in this world. Right? Listen, listen, guys. Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Because as he is, so are we right now in this world. Some people say, well, I'll just do that when I get to heaven. I'll walk in that when I... There's not going to be any sickness in heaven. You're not going to need to walk in dominion in heaven. <clears throat> right? Well, I'll just get... I'll just... I'll be rich when I get to heaven. There is no poverty in heaven. Right? There's poverty on earth. And God needs His kingdom to come on earth as it is in heaven. There's sickness on earth. There are lost souls on earth. And God says, I need to use you to bring my kingdom on earth as it is in heaven, right? Where there's no sickness. 
There's no poverty. Right? And I could go on and on and on. And God says, I want to use my church to bring about my kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. And he says, as Jesus is, right, so are we right now on this earth. Right? What is Jesus? He's whole. He's healed. He's loved. Right? And God says, as he is, so are we right now on this earth. And he's using us. That same life that he's given us, that resurrection power life, that new nature, the Holy Spirit that's on the inside of us, he's using us to release that everywhere that we go through our words and actions, right? And we're constantly listening to the voice of the Holy Spirit to find out what he's calling us to do every single day. And that's what we're learning in this class, how to tap into this, how to fully access the power of the Holy Spirit. Two of the most powerful prophetic end-time books in the Bible are Revelation and Ezekiel. And I've mentioned this several times before, right? When faith comes by hearing. They both start with a picture of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, the Word of God, is our what? Is our blueprint. Both of those books, Revelation and Ezekiel, begin with a revelation of Jesus, right? And they end with a temple that hasn't been built. Right? Right? And then the temple, the picture of the temple that we get in both of those books, once those temples are built, right, there's life flowing out of them. Revelation 22 and 1 says it like this, that there's a, temp, there's a, a, a river flowing from the temple of God, a river of life flowing out of the temple of God, and it's crystal clear. Right? There's a crystal clear river of life flowing from the temple of God. Where is the temple of God? It's inside of us. And God wants to release life. And he also wants to release his voice crystal clear where we can hear it. Right? And that's where a lot of this comes in. Keeping our body and uh-huh. keeping our mind and emotions still. Oh, sure. Yes. What, uh, what verse in Revelation is that? 22 and 1. Welcome. All right. Y'all having fun? Yeah. Let me see. So, we started on the message, the proofs in the pudding, and we're getting, we're working towards this, trying to finish this last page on this introduction. And yesterday, I actually went in and put in the, the syllabus, and we're going to be getting started on it soon, and it should be in all of y'all's books. Um, And when I said the proof is in the pudding, I was talking about the lives of people that's gone before us and that have walked in the power of the Holy Spirit, and we've seen them get results, you know, including Jesus and then some other men of God that we're going to begin to look at. Um, So let's come back on our, let's come back onto our introduction, our last page of our introduction, and... We've covered some of this stuff this morning. You see, and that's going to be, for some of you guys that don't know, it's under tab three in your book. Um, You see it, Pastor? And then it's the last page. All right, we're in tab three, and the last page of the introduction, the top of the page, has got Matthew 3, 13, and then today we talked about Acts 10, 38, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit, and he went about doing good, healing all who were oppressed of the devil, right? In 1 John 3, 8, Jesus' purpose was to destroy the works of the devil. Likewise, our purpose is to do the same. 1 Corinthians 14 and 4. We talked about that in Jude 20. When we pray in the Spirit, we edify ourselves. To edify means to charge like a battery. It also means to build up like a house. And I made this comment on the page. It says, whatever builds us up spiritually 
will affect us mentally and physically as well. That same power that's in our spirit will be, begin to flow out in our body, right? And will begin to work in our soul as well. Our mind, will, and emotions is going to have a, a ripple effect in our bodies and in our minds. Um, the Apostle Paul, okay, tapped into spiritual law and he learned that, and he talks about it throughout the epistles, but primarily in 1 Corinthians 14, he talks about, he says, when I pray in the Spirit, I'm praying directly to God. And he says, when I pray in the Spirit, I edify myself. Now, the whole purpose of this is to edify others. I'm not just edifying myself to get puffed up and float around and above everybody else and just fly around. No, I'm getting puffed up. Or I'm getting built up. I'm getting edified so I can edify others. Amen? Because knowledge puffs up, but what? Love edifies. So we're built up so we can build others up. So Apostle Paul was get, being built up. We looked at Acts chapter 19 where he went out. They were literally taking pieces of his clothing and sending them out, and people were getting healed from it, right? With the woman, the woman with the issue of blood, right, in Mark chapter 5, 25 through 34, we see where she came up and she wanted to touch him, his clothing, and she says, if I touch him, I'll be made whole. She touched him, she was made whole. And now we see the Apostle Paul, he's actually sending out clothing, right? And people are getting healed. So we're starting to see some of these greater works. We saw where people would bring their, the people that were sick, and they would try to get them in Peter's shadow, and they would be healed from even the shadows. So that power, that Holy Ghost power, flowing off of the believer and on to others, right? So some modern-day testimonies. Bill, Bill Hammond has written a book. His book is called 70 Reasons for Speaking in Tongues or Praying in the Spirit. And it's one of the best books I've ever read um, other than the one we're reading now. Um, there's like three, three of my favorite books are uh, 70 Reasons for Praying in the Spirit, Walk of Spirit, Walk of Power, the one that we're reading now, and then Tongues Beyond the Upper Room by Kenneth E. Hagin. All those books are really amazing. And you can really, these are people, these are forefathers of the faith that have been in, you know, they've done ministry for 30, 40, 50 years, some of them longer. And they've gotten results just really simply taking the Word of God and applying the Word of God, right? And we're seeing it in their ministries, and that's what the, the title of the, this last teaching, The Proof is in the Pudding, that's what I was talking about. People applying the Word of God and getting results. So modern testimonies, and we're getting ready to close out. Bill Hammond serves as a bitch, bishop to over 3,000 ministers and churches. His ministry, Christian International's headquarters, cover five continents, and he's operated in the prophetic for more than 60 years. He's trained over 250,000 people in the prophetic. He's seen many signs and wonders, and he attributes his success to praying in the Spirit. And he's the one that wrote the book, 70 Reasons for Praying in the Spirit. It's a, it's a, it's a great book, really, really good. I suggest getting that later on once we get done with this one. Smith Wigglesworth experienced revival on every inhabited continent on the earth. It's documented that he raised over 20 people from the dead. Wigglesworth never read a thing in his life prior to being filled with the Holy Spirit and speaking in tongues. Then the Holy Spirit taught him to read. That's amazing. I've actually, I knew a guy that I, that I kind of helped in the Lord in his beginning stages. And he couldn't read, he couldn't write, and he got baptized in the Holy Spirit, and now he's a preacher. It's amazing. He's read the Bible, and, which is, you know, not the easiest book to read, but um, he's read it and he understands it spiritually. But it's just powerful how when you get the Holy Spirit, you get baptized in the Spirit, how things in your life will begin to change. So um, Wigglesworth had never read a book. The Holy Spirit taught him how to read. And in his, bi in his biography... In the biography of Smith Wigglesworth, Stan Stanley Howard Frodsham wrote the following. The gift of tongues was a priceless treasure to him. And many times every day his heart went out in love and adoration to God. Not in the defiled languages of earth, but in the Holy Spirit given language of love that God gracious, graciously gave to him. He lived the verse Jude 20, 21, building yourselves up on your most holy faith, keeping yourselves in the love of God. When praying in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit pumps love throughout our bodies like our hearts pump blood. Perfect love casts out every fear. Amen. We can't edify 
others unless we ourselves have been edified. But once we've been built up spiritually, we can then help others. Brother Kenneth E. Hagin said that the greatest things that have ever happened to me in my walk with God, the greatest healing miracles, financial breakthroughs, and deliverances came after I had spent prolonged lengths of time praying in the Spirit. And Dave Roberson, in the book that we're reading, he, he's going to give his own story of how he began to implement a prayer life with the Holy Spirit. And you're going to begin to see signs and wonders, miracles. And really, I think one of the, the biggest miracles that happens is you see the transformation in his character and the transformation in his life. Things that he was struggling with coming into salvation are going to begin to be removed. And he says, I look back over a certain number of years and you know, realize that I had been transformed into a new person. And I think that's, that's the main thing, right? When God begins to take that old man and begins to transform us and turn us into a new man. And we're no longer walking a life of selflessness, right? Or selfishness, now we're walking a life of selflessness, right? We're no longer, we're no longer focused on ourselves, but now we're focused on what? Others. Right? Because no greater love does man have than this than to lay down his life for his friends. Right? So, we'll see miracles in that book. Does everybody have a book? Who doesn't have the new book? I know you don't because you just got here. I want to encourage you guys to, especially tomorrow, we're going to get started on the syllabus and it's going to be like a fresh start. But get into that book, man. There's a lot of good information in that book. There's a lot of good revelation in that so book. I'm about halfway through the book. The guy has a lot of experience in there, uh, you know. So if if you read, I think if you read the book right now, which you should be doing, write down some questions. Because I mean, there's some things in there. I'm like, well, I've never heard that before, and so I've just been writing them down. Yeah, man. And then I feel like as we go through this course, those things will be explained better. Yeah. So it's definitely something that's gonna, you know, raise up questions because the guy has scripture but then a lot of his personal experience in there yeah. like this is what I did this is what I believe this means because of my experience and it, it, it was pretty uniquely explained sometimes I was like wow that's pretty I never thought of that that way yeah. so it was good it was a good so far it's a good read it's amen. A great read, yeah. amen and I think um, one of the main things that I like in that book other than the transformation of our, of our lives, the character in our lives, is the breakdown in chapter 5 on the four diversities of tongues. Yeah. And that's very, yeah. very helpful. Um, so let's, let's close out with Mark 16, 17 through 20. And then we'll be done with the introduction. Amen. Can you read that for me, Josh? Sure can. And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents, and if they drink anything deadly, it will no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick, and they will cover. So then after the Lord had spoken to them, he was received up into heaven, and he sat down at the right hand of God. And they went out and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them and confirming the word through the accompanying sign. Amen. Amen. Y'all see that? This is the Great Commission. This is in red. This was, this was spoken by Jesus to the church, right? And we are the church. Amen. And he said, these signs might follow those who believe, right? These signs shall follow those who believe. They'll speak with new tongues, right? They'll cast out devils. They'll lay hands on the sick, right? If we drink anything deadly, it won't hurt us, right? So he's showing us this, this power that he's given to the church to walk in to do what? To bring about God's will on earth as it is in heaven, right? And then it says he went up into heaven, and then it says the disciples begin to go out and preach the very gospel, not only that Jesus taught to them, but the gospel that he demonstrated to them, right? 
they begin to go out and preach this gospel, and it says that Jesus backed up, Holy Spirit and God backed up every single thing that he said he was going to do. It said he backed up his word and confirmed it with what? A company signs. In other words, when they went out and they began to speak to demons, demons began to come out. When they began to go out and open up their mouth in faith, they began to, to, to pray in the Spirit. When they went out and they began to lay hands on the sick, it didn't say they might recover. It said they shall recover. Right? So we have to... Our faith cannot be based on our experience. Our faith can't be based on our denomination. Our faith can't be built on what Grandpa told me or what Daddy told me. Right? Our biological father. Our faith has to be in the Word of God. Right? And that's what Brother Keith Moore was saying yesterday in faith school, that we have to have a lifestyle of faith. Right? And it's not faith in the world. It's not faith in man. Our faith is in God. And if God has said it in his word, right, then he's going to back it up. Whatever he tells us to do, whatever he's calling us to do, he's going to back it up with the accompanying signs. Everything that he says right there, it says they went out, they began to preach. And everything that Jesus told them and taught them, it said God, heaven backed them up when they began to preach it. And it manifested on the earth. Amen. God is not a respecter of persons. What he did for them, he wants to do today. Because the Bible says... That if we abide in him, we'll walk just as he walked. And then we saw in 1 John 4, 17, that as he is, so are we in this world. Not when we get to heaven, right now in this world. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Brother Chaz has got an awesome testimony. So, Brother Chaz, I want you to come up, share your testimony real quick, and then close us out in prayer, please. Thank you. <coughs> so, uh... A lot of y'all know my background. Y'all know my original testimony. Uh, two years ago, I got arrested in Columbus. Three years ago, I got arrested in Phoenix City. Uh, when I got arrested in Phoenix City, I got charged with uh, controlled of uh, illegal substance or a controlled substance with intent to distribute. When I got arrested in Columbus, uh, so it didn't distribute in Phoenix City. When I got arrested in Columbus, I got hit with uh, possession of a controlled substance with intent to distribute in trafficking. Uh, a year ago, I graduated the center. Uh, when I came back and went and checked with the public defenders about my case in Columbus, they told me that my charges were dismissed. Uh, Yesterday, I got a letter in the mail saying that my charges in Phoenix City are now dismissed. Uh, and it wouldn't be possible without Jesus. So, he came to set the captives free. Yeah. So, that's my testimony. So, uh, are there any prayer requests? No? Keep the guys here at Able in Prayer and then also the people at the Center of Hope and then the people in the jails too. Yeah. We're still trying to get back into Lee County and Russell County. Just praying that all those things will open back up. Yeah. Lake Forehand. I'd like to pray for Lake Forehand. Lake Forehand. And, and a young man named Chance that's been calling me a lot. Pray for him. Because he's needing, he's needing some love. That's good. I have another young man named Sean. A guy named Sean. You got it? Sean, Sean Blake, Blake, Chance. Chance.